What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. It is I, Helen Karens. Uh, glad you're here. Today's video is a little different. It's not about um, my pregnancy. I'm taking a little bit of a break from that. But things are going fine. <clears throat> Today's a video that I wanted to talk about something that I, I get a lot of people asking me questions on and I just figured why not make a video and just tell my story and hopefully in doing that um people will get the answers that hopefully they're looking for so here we go okay student loan forgiveness so i got $178,000 forgiven um in august which is really really nice to have a bill or a debt of $178,000 disappear overnight praise the lord but here is the um the kicker it didn't just quite disappear overnight and i think this is where a lot of people like they're asking me questions how'd you do it what do i have to do what do i have to sign up for <sighs> let me tell you my story so i started my college career in the fall of 1996 and i just realized way back then that I didn't want to have to deal with asking my parents, you know, for money and giving them the tuition bill at the end of each semester. And I, like, I didn't want to deal with that just because I had seen the stress that that scenario was causing when my sister was in school because she's three years older than me. So immediately I was like, I don't want to do that. So I was like, let me, let me try to find a way to somehow like emancipate myself. Like I still live at home, but I don't want to depend on their finances. So I just like the naive little 18 year old that I was, I just started like asking questions and just whatever, how can I get money? So I did work study programs um, and I did earn a Pell Grant. And that's again, Pell Grants were like based off of like family income. so. Either you get it or you don't. So I got that once. And then I was like, man, but this, this isn't enough to cut the bill. And so I was like, okay, student loans, what's that about? And I got started getting myself into student loans during like the fall or the spring of 1996. Well, that led to a habit of every semester, <clears throat> excuse me, applying for student loans. Cause I'm like, okay, the government is giving me money. I don't have to ask my parents. I don't have to give them the bill. I'm getting money from the government. But my little naive self wasn't really understanding the gist of it's a loan. <laughs> it's money that we're lending you and it's money you have to pay back to us with interest. Um, another mistake that I was making as a kid is that I would get refund checks because let's say you get a loan for $10,000, just a round number and the tuition costs are seven thousand dollars so that extra three thousand dollars it doesn't automatically go back to the company those three thousand dollars come to the student or they go to the student so here i am oh my god i got money i got money i got three grand Whoa! not realizing that no you should have sent that money right back so that your bill isn't ten thousand dollars with interest in the future instead seven thousand dollars with interest which makes a big difference whatever so i kept doing that year after year after year after year after year did more work study um even got like jobs on campus like an administrative assistant position i had at njcu for a few years you know and just trying to make ends meet that way so in around i would say like 2007, the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program started. I had no idea what it was, but around 2000, I think 2009, 2010-ish, I was working at a high school and I love these teachers. We had such a great team back then. And so one of the music teachers, she was like, let us do something together. And I'm like, what are we gonna do? So, she gave us these papers for public service loan forgiveness. I don't know what the heck it was. All I said, well, if they're gonna sign up for this, I'm gonna sign up for it too, so I signed up. 
So basically, the program back then stated, if you work in public service, that's like being a teacher, um, a nurse, or like a police officer, public service, and you make 120 qualifying payments, then after the 120th qualifying payment, we will forgive your loan. That sounds like a nice deal. And if you, you know, quantify like 120 payments, like in terms of years, it equates 10 years of service. Okay, whatever. So I signed up for it. Here was the issue with that program back then. It's that they had so many like little like rules, weird rules that would keep people from not meeting the requirements for a qualified payment. What do I mean? I'll give you an example that I experienced a lot. If I owed $99.26, okay, 99.26, that was my monthly payment. Just an example, because it wasn't that low. And me thinking that I was being a good little financial person, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna round it up. I'm just gonna pay $100. Yeah, a little extra, right? So I'm thinking that I'm doing a good thing and what was happening is because my payment wasn't the exact total of 99 and 26 cents, they took the payment, they took the money, but they didn't consider it a qualifying payment. So it didn't qualify. So it didn't count toward that 120 that I was working toward. There's another um, problem that I had experienced with that. I've always been really, really good at paying my bills on time. I'm talking like, if I were to show you my credit report, y'all be like, dang it, girl. Like, I do not pay my bills late, like, ever. Maybe once in, like, 30 years, but no, that's not me. But if the payment got to the student loan company, I would say maybe, like, five days past the date or nine days past the date. Usually there's, like, a 15-day... 20 day grace period mm -mm. if it wasn't like received right on the day again they'll still take the money okay but they wouldn't qualify the payment so in 2017 um, if you had applied for the program in 2007 which is when the government had started this I think Bush was the president I think W the son I don't even know one of the Bushes okay so you would think that if you signed up in 2007 when the program started that you would have received your forgiveness in 2017 10 years well da -da 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 -da, i don't even know which number it is or what percentage but i would say less than three percent of people in the program received their forgiveness and i and i don't even think it was three percent i think it's like a lot less because people like me were getting screwed. Here we are working and working and paying and paying and and the payments weren't fully qualifying. Whatever, I still stayed in the program. Now, one of the things that you had to do when you were in that program is you had to be on an income-driven repayment plan. So, I mean, again, I didn't really fully understand what I was doing, but I was just constantly just trying to read and just trying to keep up and whatever information studentaid.gov or I guess it was Nelnet at that time, whatever information my student loan servicer sent me, I made sure to read it, even if I didn't understand it. I would read it and then I would just click, click, click and do whatever it told me to do. And so um, I remember when I had my daughter in 2015, things got really, really tough because we were like considering bankruptcy like that's how tight we were over at Casa Karen's and so I was like I really need to like figure out my my repayments so I started learning about um, economic deferments and forbearances and things of that nature and I would take an economic deferment here and take an economic deferment there meaning like I can't afford to pay these bills right now so please just stop my payments and then in like six months, 12 months, start them up again. So I would do that on and off. And then when I would come back and do payments, I would do the income-driven repayment plan. 
What does that even mean? They would base your payment on how much you're earning. So, excuse me, I've got gas. So if like, you know, if I lost my job or if I was not making as much as I was normally making, I would fill out this form and they would recalculate my payment to reflect, I guess it was 10% of how much I was earning. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm on maternity leave, which means I'm not making a lot of money. So I, I would recertify and fill out the form during maternity leave. And that would lower my payment because I was only making like 60% of my regular salary. So it had lowered drastically. So the payment got lowered. Again, it was still in the 400s. It was still in the 500s, but it was affordable. Okay, moving on. So now, COVID hits. Okay, COVID hits. And, you know, the government is realizing people can't pay their bills. Times are tough. Let's pause. All right, we had that payment pause for about three years. I guess it's it's done now because we're in September and payments are resuming, like I think as of October next month. So I was like, praise God, I don't have to make these payments. Ah! And then here comes Papa Biden. And he's like, yo, let's, let's, let's revamp these programs. The IDR, Income Driven Repayment, Public Service Loan Forgiveness. They revamped it. Well, during the pandemic, they revamped the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program so amazingly. They did a waiver. And so all those payments that I had made that weren't qualifying because either they were five days late or because, you know, they were like 17 cents over, you know, what the exact payment was, now they started qualifying. So my payment count started going from like 50 to like 63 to like 78 and i'm like oh my god the payment counts are starting to go up but not only that but i have had like i said i started school in 1996 started um accruing student loan debt i would say like fall of 96 spring of 97 and so i have had loans that have been in repayment for like a really really long time so two of those loans, my biggest, biggest loans, they had about like 98 qualifying payments on them, like 98. Mind you, the goal is 120. Well, this waiver that they did during the pandemic said, if you consolidate all your loans together, which I had 11 of them, then the payment counts will not reset because that was a rule from the old public service loan forgiveness if you had like 30 payments and then you decided oh you know what i want to consolidate and just have one loan and blah 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 they'd say okay we'll consolidate but the repayment tracker would reset to zero so you would lose those 30 qualifying payments thankfully papa biden was like no they're not going to lose their payments we are going to take the number of highest qualifying payments the highest loan and we're gonna make that the total for all the loans and i was like what so yo i jumped on that so quick and i a part of me feels feels bad i know i had mentioned it like to my mom and i had mentioned it to other people but i guess they just didn't really understand what i was saying to them and they didn't take advantage and in hindsight when now they're talking to me and i'm seeing their numbers i'm like you could have had forgiveness too whatever we'll get to that point in a minute so i legit took advantage i again do i 100 percent understand what i'm reading i probably understand 80 percent of it but i just keep reading I just keep doing and I keep clicking buttons and I keep hitting, you know, the little question mark to define this term for me. What is this? And I Google this and I Google that. And so I just made sure the bell is ringing. I just made sure that I met the requirements of signing up or consolidating my loans before October 31st of 2022. I was like, I got to get this in, got to get this in. And I got it in by October 25th. So now let's talk about the forgiveness aspect the question that i've been getting a lot from people is 
how'd you get your loans forgiven? Because, because a lot of people are thinking that it was just like, well, I'm with Mohila, I'm gonna automatically get it forgiven. No, like you have to be in a, in a program, some type of forgiveness program. I had one girl ask me and she, you know, she just got out of school about like a year ago and she has like 20 something in, in debt. How am I gonna get it forgiven? I'm like, you gotta sign up for a program. Like my loans got forgiven because I have had loans since the late 1990s. I have had loans in repayment since like 2000 over 20 years i have been paying on those loans 700 here 800 there 400 a thousand here i have been paying i have been doing my due diligence to to pay back what i borrowed and i know a lot of people were upset when papa biden was doing um all these overhauls and announcing all this student loan forgiveness that he wanted to do and oh it's not fair you know i paid my loans back now nah, they're not gonna pay their loans back that was very insulting to me i don't know about other people but i worked very hard to pay back my loans and i didn't sit on my ass and my behind on my butt waiting for a handout i paid my stuff I did what I had to do. I signed up for the programs I had to sign up for. I read the fine print. I called and called and asked questions. And I did whatever it is I had to do, but I paid. And so the programs pretty much gave forgiveness or allowed me to have loan forgiveness because I have met this, I beyond met the threshold of 120 qualifying payments. I beyond met the threshold of loans in repayment for over 20 years. And so that's how I got forgiveness. So <clears throat> for anyone that's interested in like, well, how do I get my loans forgiven? Here's the first thing I want you to do. I want you to go to studentaid.gov and I want you to create your profile if you haven't done so. Studentaid.gov has all of your history, your financial history with regards to student loans, Pell Grants, all that good stuff. Log in and legit, just click on all the links and read through everything. See what it's telling you. Maybe you're a teacher and you're eligible for a TEACH grant. Maybe you work in some type of like um, low income district and you qualify for forgiveness because you work in that type of, you know, socioeconomic community. Maybe you are a math teacher and there's like a grant for math teachers. Who knows? There's so many ways of receiving forgiveness. But one of the issues that I'm noticing is that people just don't want to read. They don't want to, you know, go through the website, click on the links and read. They don't want to do that. So I want to encourage you to do that. Um, another thing that I want you to do when you get on studentaid.gov is there's a link that says like my my aid or my something. I got to find it. I should get better at doing these YouTube videos and providing more information for you guys. But <clears throat> there is a link where it says like my aid and literally when you click it and you download the file, it legit downloads your entire history of student loans. Entire history. It looks ridiculous. I mean, it's just like so much black ink on white page. Cause it's like really tiny typed up print. And it's just, it's tedious. But guess what I did? I read it from top to bottom. I wanted to see what the government said about when I took out loans, when I was in repayment, when I was in deferment, when I was in forbearance, when I was in school, when I was not in school, when I was in grace period, when I, and I literally, I read everything, everything. I also um, got onto, onto YouTube and just started, started watching vlogs about student loans. What does this mean? How do you do this? How do you do that? And I just started becoming educated on the topic. 
whenever the White House did a press briefing on the topic, I watched the press briefing. Whenever the news was talking about it, I watched the news. I watched different news outlets. I stayed connected and, you know, I allowed myself like the ability to soak in the information. Did I always 100% understand the information? No, but I kept reading it and eventually it stuck and eventually you learn something new. Um, one thing that helped me out and I'm, I'm gonna look for it right now, go into my email. When I found this guy, when I found Travis at Student Loan Planner, he, he was the one that like really helped me out. And I found him via the pandemic on YouTube. And literally his company, they would do like webinars and whatnot, Zooms, whatever free that you could log into. And I would watch like the, the playbacks and all of the questions that I had, he would answer them or the people that worked on his team would answer them. And I'm like, oh my God, now it's making sense. Then I went to his website, Student Loan Planner, and I signed up for his newsletter. So I legit still get his, his weekly email and his weekly email would explain the deadlines, what this meant, what that meant, blah, blah, blah. The next YouTube video is going to be about this, blah, blah. And he would always, always, always post. And it was, I, I'll, I mean, I don't even know the man, but thank you, Travis and your team. For helping me out and you could even go to his website and like request a consultation if you want like more in-depth like numbers based concrete where do i stand what are my options what can i do type of information because i can't give that to you um so yes travis at student loan planner was just a godsend absolute godsend and then another thing that i did i would download all of my correspondence from my student loan servicers, I would take screenshots of my pages online because the accounts were starting to change so frequently that I was like, okay, I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm keeping track of what it was the previous month and what it is now. And there was one month, sorry, just cut me off. There was one month where my payments went backwards. And I'm like, wait a minute, no, 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 no. I was at like 77, how am I at 61? So what did I do? Got on the phone. I was on the phone with Mohila, if not every month, every other month. Toward the end when I was at like 110 qualifying payments and I had other payments that were qualifying but they weren't certifying them, I was on the phone with Mohila every five days, every five days. I was keeping a notebook, keeping notes of who I would speak to, what time I spoke to them, what they said to me, so that when I would call the next time, I said I would tell them, I spoke with such and such representative at this time. They told me the following, please let me know if information has changed. What is your name? What is your position? And I would write all these things down. So I was really proactive about my forgiveness. And then um, I did find out that one of the issues, why it wasn't, being the, pro the paperwork wasn't being processed is because the human resources director from my previous school district hand wrote the word substitute on a part of the form that she shouldn't have written on. And so that caused an issue and it caused a delay of six months. Yes, six months. Cause she wrote where she shouldn't have written. And, and even before that, like I had kept reaching out to their office and saying, hey, I need you to certify these months. I worked for you these years that I worked for you. Oh, but you weren't a certified teacher. No, but I was a permanent sub and I was hired by the district and I was this and I was that and I was covering classes and blah, 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 blah. And, um, and they didn't want to, they didn't want to. And one of the things that I do in my life is that I will keep asking you questions until I get the yes that I want. <laughs> And if you're going to say no to me, I'm going to go to somebody else that's going to say yes. And if they say no, I'm going to go to somebody else. And I'll just keep going around the circle and keep going. And I will just talk your ear to death until you get sick of me and give me the yes that I want. So that's what I did. And then, of course, same thing with Mohila. Calling, calling, calling until you give me the yes that I want. Well, it got to a point where I just got so tired with the whole process 
that I said, um, you know what? I'm done, God. I'm, I'm done, God. You take the wheel. I'm, I'm finished. You do it. And I remember that day I was crying in tears. They had me on a hold for two and a half hours. Mohila, nobody would pick up, nobody would help me. And I just, I got so frustrated. I said, I have done all I can do. I've done all, all these years. I have done all I can do. I've researched all I can research. I've called all I can call. And I finally, after God knows how many years, I didn't give up, but I gave it to God. And... And I just stopped looking at the computer and I stopped calling. And then all of a sudden, I just randomly logged into Mohila in August and I saw a happy face. The hell? Oh no, that wasn't what it was. First it was, I was trying to log in through my phone, through the app, and it wouldn't let me. It says, you do not have any, any information. You don't have any existing loans, so you can't log in through the app. I said, we now have existing loans. What you talking about? So then I went to my de desktop. I logged in there. And when I logged in, I saw the happy face. And I said, the hell is this happy face? This emoji. And then I called Mohila and I said, hey, I was trying to access you guys on my app and it wouldn't let me. Came on the desktop and I see a happy face. What does, what does this mean? And so she's like, oh, let me look into it. So she looks into it. And um, and she says, um, congratulations, your loans have been forgiven. Loan number, blah, blah. And she starts reading it to me. Loan, blah, 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 blah. In the amount of blah, 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 blah. Was forgiven on the following date and time. And I'm sobbing, crying. She goes, loan, blah, blah. Because it was now it was two consolidated loans. Loan, blah, blah, blah. In the amount of blah, blah, blah. Was consolidated on blah, blah, blah at this time. And I'm just like is she really saying what i think she's saying and i'm like how come i never received a letter she goes you didn't receive a letter we sent it out i said no i didn't get it i said can you email it to me she goes of course mind you i'm crying i can't even speak so i told her thank you so much and when i checked my email she sent it to me and lo and behold on august 8th they had forgiven my loans from 178,000 to zero so for anyone that is looking for loan forgiveness, it is not going to happen overnight. <laughs> it is not going to happen just because you have loans. You have to work for the forgiveness. You have to work for the forgiveness. You can't just not pay your loans. You can't just sit there and let them accrue interest and default on them. Like you have to do your due diligence to do your part and research you know and and just try so i mean i don't know if the information i shared has has helped anybody or has clarified anybody's thoughts if you still want to reach out to me personally you can but um th this was years of work in the making years of hard work over 10 years of service um god knows how many thousands upon thousands of dollars i have paid the government <laughs> because every time i would pay them the bill wouldn't go down it just went up because my um monthly due never really covered not even the interest on the loans so the principal and the interest kept growing because i was just paying just a tiny bit and a thousand dollars was considered a tiny bit on my loan so it is what it is i pray I pray success for anyone who is seeking um, loan forgiveness. I, um, I pray that God gives you the strength to, to really research the topic and to open your mind to learning what you have to do and, and how the government works and all that good stuff. And I, and I hope and pray that if you're eligible for forgiveness that you get what is owed to you, you know, that you get it. So again, I hope this video helps. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Reach out if you have any questions. Um, comment below if you've received forgiveness, like and maybe what your process was like, because maybe what you went through can help somebody else reading the comment section in the future. So thank you guys. See you next time.